Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 9% Show. I am your host, Stephen Burton. And here at the 9%, y'all know we keep everything 100. If I haven't done it, not doing it, or not about to do it, it will not come out my mouth. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the 9% Show. Please do us a favor. Like, subscribe, and uh, comment below. And if this if this episode rings home for you, please share it with your network because we're dropping gems all day on these episodes. And today is no different, no different. We are going to talk about turning visitors into customers in e-commerce. Okay, so this is all for all my people with e-commerce stores out there. Um, as y'all already know, I love e-commerce. E-commerce is my thing. It's my particular favorite thing. It's the business that I have started has all been e-commerce for the most part, besides some music stuff I did back in the day with licensing and music and publishing and all type of stuff. But anyways, this is discussion for another day. Today we're talking about e-commerce and we're talking about turning these visitors into customers. So you might be clicking on this video because maybe you're getting tons of traffic to your website and ain't nobody purchasing. Okay, maybe you got a big old social media following and you're like, hey guys, go to my website, it just launched and ain't nobody purchasing. Maybe you just released a little makeup brand and ain't nobody purchasing, whatever the case would be. It is not as easy as it sounds to, to convert users into customers. And the fact of the matter is, you have to know that you are working against statistics, okay? The average conversion rate for an e-com store is somewhere between eight, one and 3%. And if you are at 3%, you are killing it. You are crushing it, okay? You are like, that is where everybody wants to be. But if you really think about it, if you really dive deep into that numbers, that's pretty much saying 100 people come to your website, you're hoping one purchase it, or you're hoping two purchases. Like that is not a lot, but it's the internet. And people surf the web. People just go into a website, look at little things. People might get to your website from uh, going to uh, Google Images and maybe you just have a great image on your website and they enter in through that. There's so many reasons that you can have visitors on your website that might not necessarily be there to purchase. But how do you separate them people that is ready to purchase? How do you know the intent ready to buy customers? How do you know or, or just how do you improve your conversion rate in general? But like I said, just just knowing that the that you are working against the grain that naturally your uh, uh, conversion rates for e-commerce stores are naturally low and it just is what it is. So on the flip side of that, you should actually not feel as bad now that you're not getting that many sales because it just is what it is. Like it's, 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 a, it's an industry wide thing, no matter what the website, I'm sure Amazon got a, a, a low conversion rate for the amount of traffic that they probably drive there. It just, it just is what it is. Cause there's so many looky loos, but there is things that we can do to improve our e-commerce store so that it converts, it converts better. And we're going to talk about five different things, five tips that I feel like if you apply these five things, you will see some, um, improvement in your conversions and finally getting some sales, okay? So like we always do before we get started at this time, we go take a toast to the nine percenters out there and those that want to get into the nine percent, toast to you. All right, and with that being said, Let's get this thing started. We're going to talk about number one. The number one thing to turning visitors into customers is lowering the hurdles to purchase. Okay. You want to lower the hurdles to purchase. What do I mean by that? Nothing should get in the way. Nothing should get into the way of your user going to your product page, clicking add to cart and clicking checkout. Maybe you're, maybe the, the product you're selling need some additional information. Maybe it's a complicated problem, whatever the case may be. If it's a complicated problem, then you need a very simple way of, of providing that information. Um, I speak a lot of not being stuck in templates, not being stuck by whatever the Shopify template is or the, or the Wix or whatever, uh, you know, BitCommerce, whatever the template is there and, and being structured. However, your customer shops or whatever information you did convey, convey to your customer, you need to be able to do that in a simple fashion and, and, and where someone doesn't have to look for it. If every time someone places an order with you or, or is interested in order, they need to contact you or you finding yourself getting tons of emails tons of chats, tons of calls, you're doing something wrong, okay? You do not want everybody to have to contact you to, to place an order. 
If you, if you if, the, if that's happening, you can rest assured maybe 50% of the people you're losing, if not more than that. Because, you know, people ain't got time for that. We are we are in the, day, the digital age right now where we want everything quick and we want everything to be moving. And it just, it just is what it is. You need to lower all your hurdles. Um, lowering some of the hurdles also include return policy, having a return policy. Like, goodness gracious, I hate websites that don't have a return policy. How, how, how do you want somebody to feel confident that they could purchase from you if there's, there's, they're pretty much throwing away money if it doesn't work out. Again, if it's a smaller dollar, my dollar amount item, probably not that big of a deal. But I, I have a rule of thumb. I would say anything above, shoot, anything above $75, I think you for sure need a return policy. And it, it, it just is what it is. Don't be mad at, 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 at having returns. If you are the, in, the, in the e-commerce game, it is part of doing businesses. You need to, to, um, to uh, include that in your, in, your, uh, in your data, include that into your uh, projections that you're going to have returns. Um, the average return rate, for, I believe, for e-commerce stores is like anywhere from 15 to 30 percent, sometimes up to 50 percent, because you have to understand people are buying something that is sight unseen, the first time touching, the first time holding it. So sometimes it just might not work out. But you you empower the customer to make that purchase and feel confident making that purchase by having a return policy. And if you get a bunch of returns, maybe that's your sign that something's not right. You need to adjust something. You need to improve something, you know, but you need a return policy lower that hurdle. Um, uh, you know, contact information, just, ba just basic stuff, a uh, email, a phone number, a chat system, like the, whatever you can do to make your customer feel more confident is what you need to do. If you're in a position where people already trust you as a brand or trust, trust what you do, or you have tons of reviews and you've never screwed nobody over, maybe you can do without some of those, those things. But if you know, for example, with us at Perfect Tux, form aware is a little um, confusing. Not everyone knows how to um, do their shirt measurement. You know, most people go to the mall, buy small, medium, large, extra large. But in our world, there's a neck size, there's a sleeve length. It's, it's a little confusing. So we can have a, um, we can have a, a, a frequent asked question page and here's how you measure yourself and blah, 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 blah. But you have to understand that some people just might need to call or some people might need to just chat and say, can you help me with that? And so with, with, within my industry, it's definitely needed. Like I need a contact information. But if you have something that is pretty simple, maybe you don't, but whatever. You need to create your website, create your, lower these hurdles for how your customer shops, shops on your website. Streamline your checkout page. If you got a, you know, some some websites still have you going through, uh, uh, you know, create an account. You should never, if you want people to create an account, when do it, have a guest option as well, okay? Because how many of us out there, you get to the checkout page and they have to, you have to create an account, you have to, get, you know, put your email, your, your contact information, I mean, a lot of stuff that you go to check out with, but it, you know, now I think about it, that's just a hurdle for no reason. I mean, you got to put all that stuff in it, but sometimes it's just double work. Or for, even for me, I check out as guests all the time. I just don't like all that additional stuff. I don't know. It's just me. But people think like that. People, um, matter of fact, I'm going to do a little poll here real quick. Any of y'all, y'all check out, I'm talking to my team here. Do y'all, do y'all, do y'all like creating accounts? Or do y'all, um, I check out as guests. Check out as guests. Check out as guests. Okay. We three, three to oh, check out as guests. Okay. So that should tell you if you got a website that requires an account to be made, don't do it. Or at least have a guest option. Okay. So you want to streamline your checkout page, all that good stuff, lower the hurdles to make a purchase. Okay. Because you might be doing some stuff that look right. It sounds right. It seems right. But nah, that could be the reason no one is buying. All right. Number two, okay, you always want to optimize for mobile first. Always, 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 always. There is no reason 80% of the traffic, if not more, is on their phone and tablet when they're surfing the web. Don't believe me? Go to Google Analytics. You should have some type of tracking situation. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about that, about that a little later uh, on, on, on this episode. But it is a fact, okay? A lot of people, when we create websites, we do it on a desktop, we do it on a laptop because it's just more easy. It's more easy to edit your website on a larger screen than doing editing a website on a mobile phone. 
And that's fine. You should do it on that. But you should do it optimized to everything you do for mobile view first. If you're on Shopify, click the little button that makes it to a different device or, or you know, if you got Google Chrome, if you do inspect, there's a mobile view of it. Like you need to see how it looks on mobile first, then see how it looks on desktop. Uh, so many times I'll make sure something looks good on mobile, even if it doesn't necessarily look good on desktop. Long time that used to be the opposite, but no, I don't care. 90%, 80% of the traffic is on, on mobile. You need to make sure your mobile site is looking good. But the challenge is when it comes with mobile is that everything is condensed. So things that you think are, you know, obvious to everybody, for example, like the hamburger, you know, the hamburger thing of a menu, they call that a hamburger. When you see those little three lines, and you think most people know what that is by now and they click that. I will tell you that most people have no idea what a hamburger is in the menu. How do I know that? Am I just guessing? No, I'm the e-commerce king here. Go to hotjar.com. And I've said this several times. Matter of fact, they should be sponsoring me by now because I give them all type of plugs. But go to hotjar.com and you sign up and you can see, you can actually view recorded videos of people on your website. And I was shocked to see how many people came into my website, came in on a product page, came into whatever the page they on, and they just didn't go nowhere. They didn't go, they, they didn't go anywhere else. They just left out. And I'm like, how is that possible? Surf the web, surf my website. I have over a hundred pages on here. Surf around. Well, a little adjustment of just like, you know, keeping it simple. I just like, I just said, you know, when somebody comes on this website, I'm gonna, instead of making the hamburger thing, I'm gonna make the, the menu right here in your face. Like uh, shoes, shirts, boom. How many people saw shoes, shirts right there and just click shirts? It's a psychology thing. You have to get into the psychology mode of your customer, how people use a website. Just because all these templates and, and squeezing it down to mobile friendly, you know, whatever the case may be, how does your customer shop? And signing up to Hotjar and actually watching how they shop is going to do you a service, okay? You're gonna be able to make so many adjustments and so many misconceptions of how you thought about your customer and how you surf your website because subconsciously, you know how to search your website. But how does someone that just landed in your website, it, 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 it's, just, it's just different things. You should always be looking about how can I make this, this experience better? How can I make this, this experience better? I had a really recently just had a situation where my cousin was wanting a, a suit off our website. I was talking, I was like, man, just let me know what it is. And he saw a suit on our homepage, when you, you know, homepage, the, the, the main page of our website. And he saw a suit on there and it was like a green suit. He was like, oh man, I like that. And he went to our suit page and, and he was there and he was looking around. He said, like, oh, do I go to, uh, do I go to fashion suits or do I go to classic suits? And, and I was like, oh, just go to fashion ones because it's under there. My thought process was that, okay, anything that's fashion is going to be different colors, random colors. But I was like, it made sense. Like, hmm. And so now I'm in the mode of like, well, maybe we need to put our color things on this page. Or maybe I'm always thinking about the customer experience, how people are navigating our websites, what hurdles they're going across. Just imagine going back to number one, lowering the hurdles. Just imagine if my cousin was a regular customer and didn't contact um, customer service or something like that. They saw something they liked and they get on your website. They try to find it. They can't, they can't navigate to it. Like you need to make sure everything is great. Previous versions of my website, we had a horrible search in a search uh, bar on our website when people search for certain things because it was um it was so case sensitive. It could have been like a uh, uh, red tuxedo slim fit, but if you put a uh, uh, slim fit tuxedo it would not show because it had to be red slim fit tuxedo. Like, so again, I had to fix that situation. We had to make it where it's more broad and things coming up. You always want to pay attention to all the details of your website and how people search on a mobile first reality. Okay. You have to keep making these adjustments. It makes a huge difference. Number three, number three thing to turn those visitors into customers. Okay. 
free marketing ads, okay? Free marketing ads. I cannot stress this enough. It is golden. It is the it is the top thing you'll ever do in e-commerce. Let me tell you why, okay? Remarketing ads, retargeting ads, however they slice it up. Those are ads that you do. Right? You gotta pay for them, you, you do gotta pay for them. But you want to do it. Those are the most highest converting ads you will ever have. Why are they so high converting, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's because you're retargeting people that came to your website. It's all this stuff where people be like, oh, my phone listened to me. Oh, my phone is tracking me. All this type of stuff. Nah, it's just me. I'm over here tracking you, putting a little cookie on your little phone. And then once you leave my website, oh, perfect tux, perfect tux. And, it's, it, and you can even specify how long I want that to show. I might bug you for a whole month. Yeah, all you go see is perfect tuck stuff. Those are the greatest ads you could ever have because the people that visit your website, they have uh, an intent to buy. They are, they're showing, they have engagement with your website. They might be in your, in your website for over 30 seconds. You can specify this type of stuff. You can say, you know, I only want to target somebody that's, that's been on my website for more than a minute. Why is that so important? If somebody was on your website for a minute, remember, this is e-commerce. Remember, your, your conversion rate is so low. You got hundreds of people coming to your website, looky lose, all this type of stuff. You want to weed out the people that are just looking on your website. Maybe they came in through a Google image. They don't got no business ready to buy. But if that person is on there for 30 seconds, one minute, reading your website, looking at your website, searching different pages, man, they are ready to buy. They have, they're showing interest in whatever you are selling. They're showing interest in, into your, your, uh, your industry, whatever it is. Those are the people you want to get in front of and get in front of again. Cause how many times do we go to websites, go to websites? Oh, I'm gonna come back to that later. Okay. Don't just depend on that. You want to get in their face. So we marketing ads. Those are the greatest things you can have. Um, we could talk about how to set up, up remarketing ads, but that's not what this video is about. But um, do yourself a favor, install tracking codes, pixels, uh, for Facebook, Google, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever you want to put some ads at, install the tracking codes now so you start collecting that data and you will be great, okay? Trust me, remarketing ads will make a huge difference in your life. Trust me, you need it. Number four, the number four thing, Brand credibility, okay? So many people start an e-commerce website and they just assume that people are gonna buy from you just cause, okay? They ain't never heard of your store. They ain't never heard of your domain. They ain't never heard of you and your little about page. Matter of fact, your about page probably ain't about nothing. Probably don't say your name, where you're from. I ain't seen no photos. I ain't seen nothing. They ask me, are you in China? Oh, who, who are you? Why am I buying from you? Do not assume that just because your website is very pretty, that people will buy from you. You have to build that credibility. If you don't even have that personal brand credibility, let's say you, you know, you're a social media influencer, you got this big old, and all you do is reviews on, on makeup or something, and all you do is reviews on makeup, and you, if you release a makeup line, maybe people will trust you to buy from you. Maybe they will. But can they trust that you're gonna sip out your stuff on a timely fashion, have a return policy, all this stuff? Maybe they don't trust that part from you, but they trust watching some content from you. And that's why so many social media people, you know, release products, do type of things, and they be shocked that they don't get no sales and they don't get whatever. A lot of times you have to have credibility on the cyberspace of your website and everything you're doing. Um, if you don't have that, then you best believe you better get some reviews by hook or by crook, okay? Friends and family, please write me a review. Do whatever you can do to show that it's safe to shop on your website. I mean, back in the day, you used to have to show that, oh, we're a secure website, HTTPS and all that type of stuff. But nowadays, it's really pretty common. You know, if you got a Shopify website or any other platform, I mean, it's going to be secure and things like that. But the customer don't know that. You know, who is your target audience? If your target audience maybe skews a little older, maybe you need to figure out ways to show you that your security matters. You know, it just, it just is what it is. Whatever you can do for that credibility, for your brand credibility, for your website, you must do it and you must do it now. Because if you, you, you sleep on that, there might be a reason why you ain't getting no sales, okay? Number five, and the final thing, the final thing we're gonna talk about 
is data is king. Okay. If you don't have data with, with what you're doing on e-commerce, you are blindly just operating. Okay, you can't see nothing. You try to make changes. You try to go, okay, let me move this photo over here. Let me do this ad over here. Let me do a woo-woo. If you don't have data, you are moving blindly. Okay. Google Analytics. Have it. Install it. It's free. With that, you can see all the time. You can see your sales data. You can see your website data. Who went where? What's your most popular pages? What's not popular pages? Your bounce rates, all type of stuff. Your bounce rate. Maybe you realize that your bounce rate is 90%, meaning people are coming in to your website and they're leaving instantly. Maybe there's something you need to adjust on your website. You have to know this stuff. Maybe your most popular page um, is, is a product that's out of stock. That's happened to me. That's happened to me. I look at my data all the time. If I'm seeing that, oh my goodness, this popular page and it's out of stock, I'm like, maybe it's an error. Maybe, maybe it's what it is. You need to look at your data. Once you look at your data and you see where people are throwing it, follow their flow. Go to them. Uh, include hot jar, like I already mentioned. Use data, it is key. You need it. Um, how people navigate your website. The, uh, where do they go in at? Where do they do, uh, what is their landing page? A lot of people think common sense. Okay, at perfecttux.com is my website. Most people are going to enter on perfecttux.com. Eh, wrong. My number one web, my number one page on my website is not my home page. It's not my index, is not my index page as they call it. It's a product page. It's a subcategory page. You might be ranking on Google for polka dot shoes because you're the only one on Google that sells polka dot shoes. And if you know that, maybe that page gets more traction than your home page. And if that page gets more traction, then maybe you could say, okay, you know what? Let me redesign this page so I can get to look at other stuff on my website. You have to use data. If you don't use data, you don't know how you're moving. You don't know what to adjust. You don't know what to do. Search terms, whatever it is, you, there is data for it. Use it. It is there for you. Okay. <sighs> But I digress, okay? I get I get real animated when I talk about e-commerce because I just love it so much. I love e-commerce. It's made me, it's made me create this. It's made me be who I am, okay? I'm a computer, I'm a computer guy. Yeah, I can't tell. Back in AOL days, AIM, all that type of stuff. That's how long I've been doing e-commerce. But I am done. Those are five tips I gave you, okay? Five tips that I believe if you apply these five tips, you will see success. And if you do see, see, see success, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, begging you, do all that type of stuff so that this valuable information can get to the masses. Trust us, it helps. Um, until next time, we'll see you on the next episode of the 9% Show. Peace.